This is the story of Spantax Airlines Flight 995. On the 13th of September 1982, a DC-10 started its day flying from Palme de Mallorca to Madrid's Barajas Airport. Later that day, the plane was boarded by 381 passengers and 13 crew members. They were flying from Malaga to New York. As the passengers boarded and settled in for the flight, the pilots were configuring the plane for takeoff. They set the flaps and calculated the important speed information for this takeoff, including the V speeds. Today, their V1 speed, or the highest speed at which they could reject the takeoff and have sufficient runway to stop, was 162 knots. The plane left the gate and started to taxi towards the runway, all while the crew carried out checks and checklists, making sure that the plane was set for takeoff. As the plane lined up with the runway, the pilots got their takeoff clearance from ATC. In the cockpit, the pilots pushed all three of the DC-10's giant engines to maximum power. The huge plane barreled down the runway. It went through 80 knots. The engine parameters were all in the green. As the plane passed through 160 knots, something was wrong. A strange vibration could be felt in the cockpit. This was anything but normal. The plane was picking up speed, and the pilots had no idea what was causing these vibrations. The plane kept on accelerating, and the vibrations grew worse and worse. The pilots had no idea what was wrong with the plane. Would it be able to stay in the air? They did not know. Pilots had been taught to reject takeoffs at or below their V1 speed, in this case 162 knots, because that would give them more than enough time to stop the plane safely on the runway. But in this case, stopping on the runway would be very hard as they were going very fast. The captain couldn't fall back on his training. This was totally new. They had been trained for things like engine failures on takeoff, but not this, whatever this was. Knowing that they had too little runway to stop, the pilots decided to take off. They raised the nose of the plane. But suddenly, as Flight 995 strained to get airborne, the vibrations increased. The pilots felt that it was coming from the back of the plane. The captain could feel the plane vibrating through his control columns. He had no idea what was wrong with the plane. No idea if the DC-10 would be able to sustain flight. He knew that the plane was going too fast to stop in time, but he decided to reject the takeoff anyway. Even as the pilots brought the nose wheel back onto the runway, the plane was accelerating. The captain engaged the reversers and the spoilers, but the plane was just going way too fast. In the cockpit window, the captain saw that they were headed for the building that housed the ILS equipment. He struggled to control the plane. When it became clear that they would hit the runway lights, the captain ordered an engine shut off. As he did so, the plane began crashing into the approach lights of runway 32. The DC-10 traveled another 290 meters after it overran the runway, and it slammed into the ILS building, destroying it. But the DC-10 still carried quite a bit of speed. It broke through the airport fence and went through a busy highway, damaging three vehicles. Eventually, the DC-10 crashed into some farming equipment. Unfortunately, 50 people on the plane and one person on the ground did not make it. When compared to cruising, takeoffs and landings are absolutely chaotic. There's just so much going on. More importantly, margins are razor thin. If you lose an engine at 35,000 feet, you have a few seconds to react. If you lose an engine on takeoff, you literally have split seconds to make that decision. If you make the wrong choice at those speeds, it won't take long for you to crash into something. After all, the saying goes, a pilot's job is 99% boredom, followed by a percent of sheer terror. So what went wrong on flight 995? The takeoff, for the most part, was normal. The plane was accelerating as usual, and the plane had no trouble getting airborne. Flight 995 should have been able to take off. When they canvassed the runway that Flight 995 took off from, they found pieces of one of the tires of the DC-10. It looked like not all of the DC-10 was at the crash site. This alone does not explain the crash of a plane like the DC-10. Sure, losing a tire on takeoff might be an annoyance, and you might have to carry out a few more checks on landing, but it should absolutely not bring down a passenger jet, Air France Flight 4590 notwithstanding. But nonetheless, they sent the tire fragments to the National Institute of Aerospace Technology for analysis. The tire fragments had come from the nose wheel. They also found something interesting. 
the tire itself was not new. In fact, it had been recently retread for a third time. Retreading is a process to reuse old tires by applying a fresh tread on a worn out tire. This particular tire had gone through 14 landings after its retread. The parts that were found on the runway were from this new material that was applied to the tire to refurbish it. For some reason, it came off as the plane started to take off. The new tread is made up of multiple layers, but they noticed that the layers weren't stuck together properly. The adhesive holding the layers together was very weak. In addition to that, the retread had small bubbles in it, further weakening the whole tire. This meant that as the plane took off, multiple layers of the tread was ripped off the tire as the plane picked up speed. The retread had not been done properly. The adhesive that they used to refurbish the tire was just not up to snuff. This explains the vibrations that the crew felt as the plane picked up speed. The now unevenly shaped tire rotated faster and faster, thus increasing the intensity of the vibrations. This is where the human comes in. During takeoffs, the pilots were experiencing vibrations that they had never experienced before. They weren't really trained to deal with wheel failures on takeoff. Their very first exposure to an emergency of this sort was the real deal itself. That brings us to decision time. Decision time is the time it takes for you to see something and to react to it. Usually when you're driving or something, the decisions you have to take are relatively simple. But with an airplane, you have to consider so many scenarios. What happens if I continue the takeoff? What happens if I reject the takeoff? Etc. When you're taking off, you don't have the time to do all of that. So in an effort to simplify the decision-making process, air safety experts decided that you should not reject a takeoff above a certain speed, also known as the V1 speed. This way, it's simple. You can take action in mere seconds. In the case of Flight 995, that way of thinking failed them. In normal circumstances, the plane tells you through a series of warnings what's wrong. Here, there was none of that, just some very strong vibrations. They had no way of diagnosing what was wrong. Was there something wrong with the wheels? Maybe something wrong with the control surfaces, etc. The pilots were in the dark. At first, the pilots decided to continue with the takeoff. But when the vibrations intensified after the nose lifted off, the captain decided to reject the takeoff, even though he knew that they were well past the point of no return. He had no idea if the plane would be able to stay in the air, which is why he decided against the takeoff. On the face of it, it seems like he broke a cardinal rule of aviation, but the investigators exonerated him for that choice. They argued that his actions were justified because they were in a situation that they had not been trained for or were familiar with. In my opinion, if you decide to reject a takeoff after you've passed the point of no return, you're essentially playing the game of chance. In this case, the captain did the right thing, but unfortunately, 51 people lost their lives. A few months ago, we talked about United Airlines Flight 611. Link to that video on the screen right now. That accident was very similar to this one. The pilots decided to reject the takeoff very late, which was the wrong call, but everyone ended up walking away from that crash. That period after V1 is very critical. This crash ultimately comes down to a flow of information. For most failures, there's a light or a warning that lets pilots know what exactly is failing and how, but there's no warning for a tire that is disintegrating. The pilots had no idea what was happening with their plane, which explains the decisions that they made. What do you think? Do you think that the captain made the right call? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. By the way, before you go, we just hit 100,000 subscribers. I had no idea that the channel would be this huge when I started it two years ago. You're all amazing. Thank you for watching. I don't know what the future holds for this channel, but let's find out together. With that, Thank you for watching this episode of Mini Air Crash Investigation. If you like the videos that I make, do consider liking and subscribing. It will really help the channel grow. I will catch you guys next time. Stay safe.